Is this the best supermarket best bitter? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes today we're taking a look at this from Thornbridge it's called Lord Marples and what I want to know is it the best best bitter that's difficult to say quickly in the supermarket right now just before I get on to why I'm asking that question just a little bit of housekeeping if I feel like I'm a little bit stiff today and a little bit not as you know emphatic as usual not that that's ever very emphatic anyway it's because I've pulled every muscle well, from my arse to my head up one side of my body after lifting a very heavy table a few days ago and well yeah it's all just a little bit hurty but now is time for a beer and hopefully that will make everything just a little bit better so why am i asking this question you may be thinking well i'll tell you why last weekend i had some family coming around and i thought you know what i'm gonna go and get a selection of beers for people who well generally speaking aren't into very interesting and exciting beer but at the same time if they don't drink all of it I don't want to be sat there going eh, it's just taking up space and I don't really want it. In comes my choice for the bitter category and it is this from Thornbridge Lord Marples. Now when I bought this I went to the supermarket thinking to find a good bitter in a supermarket that can't be difficult it is still a very much you know broadly consumed type of beer here in the UK especially amongst let's be honest the older generation but not exclusively I certainly like my fair share of them but when I stood there looking across the supermarket shelves I was I was kind of well underwhelmed this is what I'll go for it was in a Morrison's and Morrison's generally speaking one of the best for beers in general for kind of a broad range and yeah there was just really nothing picking my eye out it was all well, there wasn't really a lot of Best Bitter, and if it was, it was cheap multi-pack cans of Boddington's. Like, it really was quite poor. I looked and looked and looked, and sat hiding behind one of those little promo things of beef jerky you get down the beer aisle, was this, the Lord Marples. And, truthfully, I have had it before on cask, but never from a bottle, and I thought it'd be a good time to find out, is it really any good, and is it the Best Supermarket Best Bitter? Before we break into it then, here is a quick look at the bottle and you will notice that this is no half measure. This is a full 500ml bottle, very trad Thornbridge logo on there but it does look very nice indeed. Heaps of info on the back of the bottle which we'll get into a little bit later. But yeah, it is a solid, nice looking thing and it's a proper 500ml bottle which just, well, just makes me that bit happier. Pouring very nicely, beautiful kind of amber brown best bitter colour, a bit lively actually. Now then, it has made a full pint with a bit of a thick head, but actually there is a tiny bit left in the bottle and the reason for that is because as you may notice on the front of it, it does say bottle conditioned classic bitter. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it just a little bit in the bottom because a best bitter, as it traditionally is consumed, is absolutely crystal clear. And on the note of the front of the label, we haven't discussed this, it is 4% on the nose, which for me is perfect best bit of territory. Sure, you could have a slightly more sessionable three point anything really, but you know what? And, and to be honest, I do love an amped up, a proper and rich, you know, 5% plus best bitter, but 4% for a sessionable British bitter is absolutely on the money as far as I'm concerned. In the glass, I mean, yeah, it looks solid. If I hold it there, you get a better indicator of the color. It always looks darker on camera, but where you're seeing this kind of slightly reddy hue, it's a little bit more orange, a little bit more brown really in real life. If I hold it up to the light, yeah, it is It's pretty much absolutely, it's not, okay, it's not absolutely clear, but it's not far off. It's, um, yeah, you can see a lot of detail through it at least. Nice off-white head on it. It does indeed look the business and I've just twinged my neck again for about the 300th time today. Anyway, on to the aromas. Slightly earthy, slightly twiggy, slightly foggy, as expected really. But underneath all that, there's this nice, rich, sweet, comforting, autumnal, warming kind of thing. It's, it's just the right time of year for it, let's be honest. And that sweet note, interestingly, 
I don't know why this is because I've not had one for a while. It's just been Halloween, so my automatic reaction will be, oh, it's just, it's reminding me of a sweet that I had a few days back. But the it's actually reminding me of them like drumstick lollipop things. It's got that kind of real sweet aroma to it. Very, very confectionery, very yeah, down that route, which is a bit odd, really, for a for a British best bitter, but it's by no means unappealing, so looking forward to this. Let's get into it. Cheers. Hmm. 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 I'm not sure on that one. That's um a bit more challenging on that first sip than I ever expected it to be. I have had it before, as I said, and I do remember from my previous experience of this beer that it maybe just never quite delivered what I was expecting it to. But I want to go again, just to be sure, because sometimes that first sip can throw you off a bit and you need to really just start to appreciate what's in there. Okay, so it's got this weirdly tangy thing going on. The bitterness is there. Sometimes best bitters actually aren't that bitter in comparison to a lot of more modern styles, and that's just kind of to be expected. This was bitterer at the time than, you know, anything else that it would be compared to mainly think of things like milds, but of course in today's age of hoppy pales and IPAs, best bitters really aren't all that bitter. This one though has a distinct, pretty aggressive bitterness twang to it, but also, oh that's interesting, third sip and all of a sudden I'm coming around to this a little bit, like it started off really quite challenging and three sips in I'm already going, hmm, actually I'm starting to dig it, I'm starting to dig it. That fruity note that I said was a bit kind of confectionery on the nose, the drumstick sweet kind of thing. It's still there. It's delivering it a little bit more, I say naturally, I guess now. It's a bit more honey focused. It's a bit more, I'll be honest, just in line with sweetness that you would expect from this kind of beer, more trad, darker ales. And actually it's reminding me just a hint of that Hobgoblin Stout I reviewed a few weeks ago, which I absolutely loved by the way, but I loved it. Not necessarily because it was a fantastic beer, but because it had that nostalgia hit. But there's a similarity between that, this, and actually the regular Ruby Hobgoblin, which leads me to think that it might be some crystal malt in here. It's got that slightly sweeter, slightly, yeah, it's, again, it's that sweet shop thing that just adds a little extra bite in terms of sweetness. It's, it's really difficult to describe because Compared to just generic malt sweetness, it does feel synthetic, but synthetic automatically feels like you mean it's bad, and that's not the case. I think a little bit like how Belgian beers become sweet shoppy because of the yeast. Well, yeah, Bristol Malt kind of does the same thing for best bitters in a slightly different way. Right then, top to bottom taste test time so I can really start to pick this apart. So initially, right on the front of the tongue, mild citrus notes, slightly earthy, there's almost a little bit of a lemon sherbet thing in there somewhere as well, and that is something I've said about another beer recently, but maybe that's just what I'm tasting at the minute. But yeah, there's definitely, it's low down though, it's not It's not obvious, it's just a, a hint of that kind of, that sweet shop thing. Again, probably the crystal malt mixing with the slightly, slightly um, citrusy hop notes that are in here coming across as, let's say, that kind of lemon sherbet mixes in with the carbonation that's in here kind of wouldn't make sense. On to then the first third of the tongue. It's interesting, a few darker notes come in and they are proper dark notes that you would expect with a stout or a porter. A little bit of licorice here and there. Not really a lot of coffee, maybe some bitter chocolate, but very low down. It's interesting because a lot of the times best bitters don't necessarily showcase those darker malts off in the same way that really dark beers do. But in this, I am getting that it's distinctly licorice. If it's not over the top, it's not big, it's not brash, but it's definitely, definitely in there. Over the mid palette, it's pretty muted, if I'm honest. The hop notes come back in, both citrus and that slightly grassy, uh, foggy, uh, you know, the, the, the dank leaves and twiggy bits from Trad Ale. It's in there, but those slightly more modern, slightly zestier notes are helping lift it through and it doesn't become just all too old and disinteresting. Straight then to the back of the tongue. The sharp bitterness picks up a little bit, doesn't drag a huge amount along with it. It's not a very changeable beer, this. There are a lot of different flavors in it, but they are all there in one degree or another, right from the start all the way to the end. Continues, but 
yeah, it's um, you just get a big shot of bitterness ready before you swallow it, and it's kind of just reminding you that this is proper, raw, and slightly amped up in that department for a best bitter. Then though, onto the aftertaste. That nice, sweet, sweet shoppy confectionery stuff comes straight back in, bitterness dwells away, and you're left with this slightly drying, ever so slightly still, like the bitterness from the back of the tongue is still lingering, like you can't get away from it, but it doesn't get any more. It's always dying off after that point. It is, I guess, still present though in the aftertaste. And yeah, it leaves you with this slightly dry mouth, slightly dry throat, wanting you to go back in for another sip. And somehow, despite everything to that point, not feeling necessarily all that kind of dynamic and balanced and sitting well together, the end result, is something well something completely the opposite it's alarmingly balanced it just sits there kind of it was refreshing it was tasty it was enjoyable it was hmm weird very weird now i'm still a bit yin and yang on this one sip i love it one sip i'm going no, i'm not really sure while i make my mind up on that though let's take a quick look at the back of this bottle so on the front of it again it says thornbridge since 2005 lord marple's bottle conditioned classic bitter at four percent and on the back it goes on to say lord marple's was the first ever thornbridge beer that was it that was that was the first one brewed in 2005 and named after mr marple's an aspiring former owner of the thornbridge hall which is where they are based uh, it pours an attractive mahogany yeah not bad description to be fair good word uh, bringing forth flavors of honey and caramel honey yes I think I mentioned it caramel it's just not quite as natural sweetness that caramel for me but yeah either either or um, it says with just a light bitterness in the finish to keep it balanced I'm gonna disagree maybe my taste buds are off today but it felt more than light bitterness for a best bitter it felt properly quite staunch in that department it says this bottle contains fresh live beer bottle conditioned to create natural carbonation and the flavor you would expect from a pint of cask ale in pub uh they're not from yorkshire i don't know why i did that uh please pour carefully to leave the yeast in the bottle which i have absolutely done and that really is about it so their first ever beer i have no doubt it's been fettled with since 2005 it's nearly 20 years old this beer but well not this bottle hopefully um but I think for its time, it would have been quite standout, quite almost revolutionary in some spaces, but I'll be honest, it's not quite standing up for me today. It's fine, it's decent. If you fancy a darker beer and it's the only thing on, I would order it, but is it the best, best? I mean, it, it is the best, best bitter I could find. I have no doubt that from the selection given to me in Morrison's that day, this was the one to go for but I've had far far better and supermarkets really need to up their best bit of game for me because whilst that is enjoyable and I will happily drink the bottles I've got left of it the there is room for something bigger and more impressive because it does the job it's fine there's nothing wrong with it and I should probably point that out I'm being a bit critical here but there's nothing wrong with this at all it's just not quite gelling and feel like it's got the balance that I really expect from a Best Bitter. The conditioning is a little bit disappointing, but it almost always is with a canned or bottled Best Bitter because well, you expect this on, you know, on cask and there's really no way to get around it. They've tried it with the bottled conditioning. I don't really know whether it's worked, to be honest, because, yeah, it doesn't feel any different from any other bottled beer. But it's a funny old one. It's really, really not bad. But maybe it's me, maybe it's because half my body is in absolute agony, but I'm really just not gelling with it all that much today. And I can only tell you what I'm feeling right now. But on the flip side, if I was in Morrison's again, in need of buying a Best Bitter, yeah, I'd get that one. Absolutely, hands down, because that was the best they had to offer. But in my choice, personally, I'd go and buy something slightly different um, but it is what it is and it certainly isn't all that bad so that really is all I've got to say about it so as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please like it if you haven't already subscribed if you'll be so kind and I'll catch you next time cheers